I'll be presenting this paper uh, to the school, the mitigating role of tax and benefit uh, packages for poverty and inequality in African countries amid the COVID-19 pandemic. So this is a joint uh, work with a lot of people, um, including Javier, and I'm not sure if there is anyone else here, yeah, including Javier and a lot of colleagues from even wider, uh, colleagues from SX, uh, research assistant, uh, etc. Um, so. Uh, briefly about the SoftMod project. So this is an uh, ongoing project at, at Unwider. The, the idea of the project is basically to develop tax and benefit micro simulation models in developing countries using the AeroMod software and they use models for applied uh, policy research. So I, I'm not sure if you, have, uh, if you, if you know the AeroMod um, models. So basically the Euromod models exist at least for 20 years for European countries, and they use it to do uh, tax and benefit micro simulations. So they can, for example, simulate um, just one very simple example. If you take a, a child benefit in Finland, uh, what would be the impact of this child benefit in Portugal, for example? So you can simulate the characteristics of that policy in Portugal. So basically what we do in the project is develop these models for uh, uh, developing countries. So mainly in Africa, so we have in the, in the project uh, around now nine countries. We are developing the model for more two countries at the moment, for Rwanda, for Zanzibar, and we also have the Latin American models. Uh, our colleagues here will present the, 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 uh, the papers using the Latin American models. Uh, and there is a, a huge um, initiative uh, lead, uh, that Javier and other people are leading to create these models for more countries. So, um, okay, so this is an active collaboration with national teams. So this is a very important part of the project. So for every country, we have at least two citizens that are based in that country working with the models. And those people are very important for the project because they are working in the university or in the, in the government. And they bring to us the daily life expertise. So if we need, for example, information about some policy that exists or some new policy of if, or if there is new data set that we can update the model, so they are part of the project. They, they help us in do this kind of updating the model, maintaining the model, and also delivering training. So every year we deliver at least one training uh, per country in the, uh, in the models, okay, using the models. So. Um, the models are freely uh, available, so you can go to the Unwider uh, web page, you can download the models, uh, and you can use, you can take the data sets and do the simulations uh, that you want. And uh, another um, important part is in this capacity building initiative is that we are developing now uh, online training tools, so people from all over the world will be able to have uh, a, a training to start using the model because we, we cannot uh, train everyone that wants to use the model. We have limited resources, of course. Um, so, what is this COVID-19 study? So, it was a large research project uh, about the distributional effect of COVID-19 and also the role of the existing tax and benefit system and the new discretionary policies that were created uh, amid the pandemic. So, the, in, this pro in this project specifically, we work with Zambia, Mozambique, Uganda, Tanzania, Ghana, and recently we had Ethiopia, but I will not show any results for Ethiopia in this presentation. Uh, and we also have the models for all the countries, and there are other papers uh, that are, uh, I think now are working papers only, right? But uh, developed by uh, our collaborators, for example, Javier working uh, with his team in Ecuador, a paper for Vietnam, a paper for South Africa. And the main objectives of this uh, study is to estimate the effects of the pandemic on poverty and inequality, but this is the, it's not the main goal, because estimating the impact of the, co the pandemic on poverty and inequality, you can do in different ways, even using more advanced methods that we use here. So what we, I think what is the main contribution of this, uh, the, using the micro simulation, is uh, the possibility of assessing the impact of the existing tax and benefit system. For example, if you have the, the, the right to unemployment, unemployment benefits or some additional cash transfer that were created uh, during the, the, the pandemic in some specific country, uh, to see how those policies uh, mitigate or not the adverse impacts of the pandemic.
So in this in this project specifically was a very uh, joint effort with the national teams because the information about the policies created in African countries were not easy to access. So for example, in the case of Mozambique, specifically, they had an expansion of the cash transfer. And this was announced in around June, July of 2020. But uh, if we simulated this policy, for example, for Mozambique, uh, based on this document, we would be uh, doing something completely wrong because then, because of the national team in Mozambique, we received extra information that this policy had problems to start because basically it was international organization money that it needed to be transferred to the Minister of Finance and they, they have all the bureaucracy to transfer this money to the people. The policy only started in 2021. So this is one example of how important is the, having the, those national teams uh, as a partner in this project. So uh, this, this project has um, some steps and uh, we, we are writing uh, at the moment a lit literature review about the role of tax and benefit, uh, 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 the role of taxation and social protection during crises in developing countries. And one of the things that this literature review shows is that uh, one of the, there is very scarce evidence that there, there are only a uh, uh, few number of papers that deal with this uh, issue. And the main problem that we can observe is the lack of up-to-date data. So for example, if you go to African countries, the situation is completely different from Brazil, for example. In Brazil, we are doing a national survey conducted by the government every month to assess the impact of the pandemic on incomes, labor, etc. And we don't have this in, the, in African countries. The World Bank did an effort to do that with the phone surveys. But for a lot of the countries that we have in the data set, uh, the World Bank uh, data have two limitations for us. The first one is that they don't ask for incomes. And the second one is that uh, most of the data are not available. So for example, they did the, the survey in Mozambique, they did in Tanzania, but the Minister of Finance uh, in those countries decided to not make the, the data available. So in this study for, specifically, we use the World Bank Fund service for one country, for Uganda, as a kind of uh, sensibility analysis um, uh, for informality. I would try to say uh, a, a bit about that. Let me see my time. So uh, first thing is, we don't have data, a data set, so we need to develop this uh, crisis data set. So developing the crisis data set is basically assuming that there was some shock in the country, and we do this in a very simple way. So we take the, the, the GDP trend in the country, and we observe the, we observe the, GDP, country, uh, the, G, the GDP trend in the country, and we, see, we can see that in 2020, there is a drop in the GDP, okay? So the, the analysis is pretty simple. It's just to assume that the GDP in 2020 would be the GDP that f would follow that trend. And then we, are, we take this drop that is because of the pandemic in 2020, and we uh, extend this drop um, to the micro data. So we assume, for example, if we observe in the, in the country data that 10% of the people in the agricultural sector lost their jobs, we go to the micro data and we random select 10% of the people in the agricultural sector and we move them to unemployment, okay? So this is uh, unfortunately what the maximum what we can do. We can test different ways to, to simulate those shocks, but um, it's a limitation because of the lack of available data, okay? Um, and we also do, we also use the World Bank Foreign Service because we have uh, micro data in the World Bank Foreign Service to do a, a different way to assess, uh, to assess who lost income because of the pandemic. So basically, we estimate the probability of the person to lose income in the World Bank Fund survey, and we recover this coefficient and we apply to the model microdata. So instead of, it, instead of random selecting people 
to lose their job and to lose their income, we calculate, we basically select people with more or less probability of losing their income based on the World Bank Fund service uh, for Uganda, okay? So, we develop this crisis data, then we model the tax and benefit policies during the, co the coronavirus. Uh, this study is only for 2020, okay? And, um, and we also do a lot of the compositions uh, techniques. So, first, the crisis data set, as I mentioned, um, let me show. Sorry, I thought the, the graph was here. Uh, so we do this uh, random allocation method that I just explained, and then we do the, what we call the importation method using the World Bank Foreign Service to Uganda to show that doesn't matter which, m which method you use, the result is quite similar. The biggest difference is that in Uganda, we can see a higher impact for informal workers because basically we have uh, information if the worker is uh, formal or informal in the World Bank Fund Survey. Okay. So, uh, then we model the tax and benefit policies. Uh, and what we can observe is that in Africa, tax and benefit measures at the, the household level in response to COVID-19 have been very limited. And the biggest uh, explanation to that is that they don't have budget. The government don't have money to do policies. Just as, as an example, in Mozambique, they have a cash transfer program uh, that's called uh, PSSB. And this cash transfer program in Mozambique transfers basically $8 per month for each family. Uh, benefited for the program. And this money is, the, this cash transfer is paid for, uh, by international organizations and some countries, for, I think Sweden and the UK, and they only cover one third of the country. So one third of the eligible households for the cash transfer in Mozambique receive the cash transfer. Okay? So basically they don't have money to do uh, social protection policies. Okay, uh, so in Mozambique, they basically reduced utility fees like water, electricity. In Zambia, they create a, an additional cash transfer program. In Ghana, they pause a large social feeding program during the lockdown. So basically, in Ghana, they did a kind of a negative social protection policy. So instead of providing more support, they, re they took one of the main supports they had in the country. Um, and uh, in Uganda and in Tanzania, we didn't have any relevant policy in 2020. So we don't model any policy for Uganda and Tanzania, okay? So as you, see, as you can see here in Mozambique, in this example specifically, we are not modeling the additional cash transfer because uh, it started basically in 2021. So, uh, and then, okay, we, fought, we, we we apply the method, and we are comparing headline results, basically impacts of the pandemic on the mean disposable income, income-based uh, poverty and inequality, and then we do uh, the, some of the compositions, basically um, showing how much the shock was mitigated by the automatic stabilizers. So that is basically, if you are in the formal sector and you lost a job, you have unemployment insurance, this uh, is a, one kind of automatic stabilizers. And uh, new policies adopted by the, the COVID-19, because of the COVID-19, that are those policies here, okay? Um, okay, so basically what we do, this is a very, uh, is um, a image that explain, basically, so we have a data set. The data set um, are basically, um, household surveys conducted by the government. So we have micro data from the, that, are, uh, that are produced from the, the government of, of those countries. Um, and we, we will uh, apply this way of shock the, the incomes of some individuals in those micro data. And we will create this new data set that we call the uh, counterfactual data set, and then we have another data set that is the, 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 the shock data set after simulating the policies, 
Okay? So basically, the idea is you need to have a micro data, you need to have the policy systems, and you create different scenarios, basically. So uh, jumping to the results, um, first we show that there that, that is a um, decrease in the mean disposable income for all the countries in the study. Then we applied the decomposition techniques to see if the drop in this mean disposable income uh, was mitigated by the new discretionary policies created during coronavirus, if it's explained by the automatic stabilizers, or it's explained by the just the drop incomes. So what, what we see is basically that the automatic stabilizers do not play much role here because it's not statistically significant. And there is a very small effect of the new policies implemented uh, in mitigating the effect of the pandemic. Um, when we look to poverty and inequality, the results are quite similar. So when we look to the poverty rates, the poverty rate increases. Uh, and when we look to the decomposition um, exercise, we show that the COVID policies had a very limited effect to uh, mitigate the pandemic effects. And the automatic stabilizers, in fact, they, uh, had an effect in, in a different direction, in increase the, the inequality, and mainly because the automatic stabilizers affect many people in the, in, uh, with higher incomes. So if you, if you think about uh, African countries, basically, people that are in the formal labor market are people that are, are only a small percentage of individuals, and only those individuals are affected by automatic stabilizers. So if you have a shock that affects everyone, only the top earners will be benefited by some kind of automatic policies. So the po poorer in those countries will be the most affected by any kind of shock because they are not protected by anything. So this is the, the, the intuition be behind this positive effect uh, here. Then, uh, the effect on poverty gap, quite similar, and the effect on Gini coefficient, also quite similar. Okay? So, I mean, increase in the inequality, and uh, automatic stabilizers also not helping too much, and also very limited effect of the COVID policies. So, this is another exercise that we do. We basically decompose the effect of the pandemic on mean household disposable income across quartiles, and we can split. Uh, what is variation in earnings, variation in COVID-related uh, policies, variation in automatic stabilizers, and uh, where is the disposable income. And as I mentioned before, you can see that only the top earners, they have, um, they, they, their income are mitigated by the automatic stabilizers. You cannot observe here the effect of automatic stabilizers, while you can observe some effect on COVID-related policies. Just one clarification. Automatic stabilizers are fiscal policies or savings of the people that can use them? Um, it's the existing tax and benefit policy. So it can be fiscal policy, it can be also, as I mentioned, unemployment benefits, for example. So, yeah, okay. Um, so this is, uh, this is for Zambia. So this is the effect of the emergency, emerg Emergency social cash transfer. Uh, when we go to, and as I mentioned, very limited automatic uh, stabilizer effects. Um, when we go to Uganda, that didn't have any policy, uh, so we can observe also that the automat automatic stabilizers only work for the top earners. And um, and as I mentioned, as I mentioned, we we. We had access to the World Bank Fund survey data only for Uganda, so we could compare the two methods of allocating people to unemployment, because this is the main, uh, the main way that we, act, we simulate the impact of the pandemic, is moving people to the unemployment. So this is uh, the random, what we call the random allocation, uh, allocation method that we observe, like 10% of the people in agriculture lost the income. So we go to the micro data, we random select 10%, we take their income. Then we, uh, 
we also did the imputation uh, method, and the imputation method is the one that I mentioned that's different. So we use a regression to estimate the probability of people losing income based on the World Bank Fund survey, and we take the coefficient estimated but based on uh, a lot of observed characteristic, characteristics, and we uh, input these in the input data set of the model. And the biggest difference here, you see that uh, the, the, the shape of the, the figure is quite similar, but the main difference is that when we use this imputation method, because in the World Bank Fund survey, we have information who is formal and who is informal, we can basically, we observe a higher uh, effect of the, the, the on informal than on formal employees. Uh, thank you. <laughs>